Welcome back to the Best PT Podcast. This is episode 2.15, talking about musculoskeletal pathology. Just a warning, bunker down, this is going to be another long one. Let's start from the top with Achilles tendonitis. All of these pathologies will start with the cause, signs and symptoms, and end with the physical therapy treatment. So Achilles tendonitis. The cause is usually repetitive overloading of the calcaneal tendon with possible faulty techniques. As well, those with limited dorsiflexion flexibility are more prone to this injury. Signs and symptoms include aching or burning of the posterior heel, pain with activity, morning stiffness, and swelling. Treatment includes rice, so that's rest, ice, compression, and elevation. You'll hear me use that acronym a lot through this episode. NSAIDs, so non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, so things like ibuprofen. Again, that's another acronym I'll be using almost every pathology. And then finally, for Achilles tendonitis, progress to calf stretching and then eccentric training, finally moving back to concentric training. Adhesive capsulitis, the cause is Direct shoulder trauma, it can also be an insidious onset. Those with diabetes are at a higher risk, and the peak occurrence occurs at ages 40 to 60. Signs and symptoms include localized pain down the affected arm, stiffness with arm movements, night pain, and a capsular pattern of shoulder range of motion restriction. Treatment includes mobilization of the glenohumeral joint, stretching and pain relieving modalities, A suprascapular nerve block and or closed manipulation under anesthesia may also be indicated. ACL sprains. The cause is usually a non-contact twisting combined with hyperextension and either a varus or valgus force moment. Signs and symptoms include an immediate loud pop, knee buckling, pain, and knee swelling. Treatment is rice and incense, progressing to lower extremity strengthening, Surgery is usually indicated for a complete or grade 3 tear. Congenital hip dysplasia. The cause is malalignment of the femoral head within the acetabulum, usually occurring during the last trimester of pregnancy. Signs and symptoms include asymmetrical hip abduction, tightness, and femoral shortening. Treatment includes harnessing, bracing, splinting, and traction for conservative management, an open reduction internal fixation may be indicated. Congenital limb deficiencies are usually caused by malformations in utero. They can either be longitudinal or transverse. Signs and symptoms include structural deficits secondary to impairments. Phantom limb pain may also be present. Treatment includes symmetrical exercises, range of motion, weight-bearing activities, and prosthetic management. Congenital torticollis may be caused by malpositioning in utero and or birth trauma. Signs and symptoms include lateral cervical flexion to the same side of the contracture with rotation to the opposite side. Cranial asymmetries may also be present. Treatment includes stretching, active range of motion, positioning education, and caregiver education for home exercise programs. A Cranial molding helmet may also be indicated for cranial asymmetries. Surgery may be indicated if conservative PT has failed and the child is now over one year old. Glenohumeral instability is caused by excessive translation of the humeral head during active rotation movements. Anterior glenohumeral instability is the most common, usually due to abduction and external rotation movements found in throwing athletes. Signs and symptoms include subluxation, shoulder popping, pain, paresthesia, and a feeling of a dead arm, as well as swelling. Treatment is initial sling immobilization for three to six weeks, as well as rice and NSAIDs, and then moving to range of motion and isometric strengthening, and then finishing with progressive resistance exercise. Shoulder impingement syndrome is caused by Humeral head compression of the rotator cuff tendons. Signs and symptoms include pain deep to the shoulder, a painful arc of abduction, usually between 70 and 120 degrees, 
tenderness at the bicipital groove and or tenderness at the greater humeral tuberosity. Treatment includes rice and NSAIDs, progressing to rotator cuff strengthening and scapular stability exercises. Juvenile rheumatoid arthritis is usually caused by an external virus or trauma. Signs and symptoms include a high fever, rash, enlarged spleen and liver, and lung and heart inflammation. Treatment is usually pharmacological for pain management, but physical therapy treatment can include strengthening and active and passive range of motion exercises. Lateral epicondylitis is caused by inflammation of the common forearm extensor tendon due to the ex excessive eccentric forces. Signs and symptoms include pain immediately anterior to the lateral epicondyle or just distal, and pain that worsens with repetition as well as resisted wrist extension. Treatment includes rice and NSAIDs. It may include an epicondylar strap to reduce the force of the extensors in the forearm, isometric strengthening, followed by progressive resistance exercise. Leg calf Perth's disease is caused by a degeneration of the femoral head due to poor blood supply. Signs and symptoms include pain, decreased hip range of motion, an antalgic gait pattern, and a positive Trendelenburg sign. Treatment includes stretching, splinting, crutch training, and aquatic therapy. MCL sprains of the knee, usually caused by contact or non-contact injuries with a fixed foot, tibial rotation, including a valgus force moment with external tibial rotation. Signs and symptoms include knee pain, edema, an antalgic gait pattern, and a positive valgus stress test. Treatment includes rice and incense, progressing to isometric strength exercises and gentle range of motion, and then followed by progressive resistance exercise. Surgery is very rarely indicated because the MCL has an excellent blood supply. Meniscus tears, usually caused by fixed foot rotation while weight bearing on a flexed knee. The medial meniscus is injured more often because it is attached to the joint capsule and therefore less mobile than the lateral meniscus. Signs and symptoms include joint line pain and edema and a feeling of a catch or lock in the knee. Treatment includes rice and incense and progressive strengthening. Surgery may be indicated if physical therapy fails and meniscus transplants are becoming an emerging treatment. Osgood Schlatter disease is caused by repetitive tension to the patellar tendon at the area of the tibial tuberosity in young athletes. A tuberosity evulsion occurs with subsequent edema. Signs and symptoms include point patellar tendon tenderness over the tibial tubercle, say that five times fast, as well as an antalgic gait pattern and pain with activity. Treatment includes rice, flexibility exercises, and temporarily eliminating exercises that strain the patellar tendon, such as squatting, running, or jumping. Generalized osteoarthritis is caused by chronic degenerative disease, usually begins around middle age. Almost every single individual over the age of 70 is affected by osteoarthritis in some form or another. Increased risk factors include inactivity, obesity, overuse, and fractures. Signs and symptoms include a gradual onset of pain after activity, swelling, crepitus, and stiffness. Osteoarthritic pain worsens throughout the day and with activity it is usually best in the morning. Treatment includes rice and NSAIDs. A total knee arthroplasty is usually indicated if conservative PT fails. And newer research has showed that both arthroscopy and steroid injection are ineffective, although many sources in the textbooks in both review guides discuss the injection of hyaluronic acid as an effective treatment. Osteogenesis imperfecta is a genetically inherited disease. Signs and symptoms include brittle bones with frequent fractures, hypermobility, bowing or varus shaping of the long bones, general weakness, scoliosis of the spine, and impaired lung function. Physical therapy treatment includes proper handling for caregivers to avoid fractures and fracture management with orthotics. Patellofemoral syndrome is considered a chondromalacia of the patella and is usually a repetitive overuse injury. 
Signs and symptoms include anterior knee pain, pain with prolonged sitting, edema, crepitus, and pain with taking stairs. Treatment includes medial patellar glides, patellar taping, and quadricep strengthening. Plantar fasciitis is an acute injury due to excessive loading of the foot. Signs and symptoms include a tenderness of the heel spur, pain at the insertion of the plantar fascia, Pain can be worse in the morning or after periods of inactivity or after prolonged standing. Patients usually have increased pain when barefoot. Treatment includes rice and incense, a heel cup, massage with tennis ball, medial longitudinal arch taping, heel cord stretching, and orthotics to prevent hyperpronation. PCL sprains of the knee caused by landing on the tibia with a flexed knee. It can also be a dashboard injury, so in a car accident where the dashboard forces the tibia posteriorly. Signs and symptoms. These patients are often asymptomatic except for a complaint of feeling like their femur is sliding off the tibia. Treatment includes rice, NSAIDs, and strengthening. Rheumatoid arthritis. The cause is unknown, but women are affected three times more than men. Signs and symptoms include morning stiffness, warm and swollen joints, fever, pain and tenderness in the affected joints, and swan neck and or boutonniere deformities of the hands, as well as increased fatigue. Treatment is pharmacological with corticosteroids and anti-rheumatic drugs. Physical therapy treatment includes range of motion, splinting, energy conservation education, and body mechanics education. Rotator cuff tears are usually caused by acute trauma, overuse, or chronic degeneration. Signs and symptoms include the arm being held in adduction and internal rotation with point tenderness at the greater tubercle of the humerus or the acromion process, as well as a limitation in shoulder flexion and abduction. Patients may compensate by recruiting the trapezius fibers to assist with shoulder elevation, so they may also present with trigger points, or pain in the trapezius region. Treatment includes rice and NSAIDs, the prevention of adhesive capsulitis through range of motion, and strengthening of the upper extremity muscles. Surgery may be indicated, and if that occurs, sling immobilization is required for six weeks with a total healing time of a rotator cuff repair being approximately nine to 12 months. Scoliosis, the cause is idiopathic or it can be structural. Signs and symptoms include shoulder asymmetry, a possible rib hump, but usually no pain. For treatment, there is usually no action taking if the curve does not progress. Muscle strengthening, flexibility exercises, shoe lifts, and bracing are indicated. And spinal orthotics are prescribed for curves measuring 25 to 40 degrees. And surgery is indicated for curves greater than 40 degrees. Talipes equinovarus or clubfoot. The cause is usually familial tendencies or in utero positioning. Signs and symptoms include forefoot adduction, hindfoot varus with ankle equinus. Treatment includes splinting, serial casting, and surgery may be indicated. Total hip arthroplasty is, of course, an elective surgery, usually due to osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, osteomyelitis, or avascular necrosis of the hip. Treatment, depending on approach, hip precautions are very important. Reduction of swelling, minimization of muscle atrophy, and the regaining of full passive range of motion are important treatment goals. Total knee arthroplasty, again an elective surgery usually due to osteoarthritis or osteomyelitis. The main treatment goal here is a focus on achieving greater than or equal to 105 degrees of knee flexion as well as full extension. Moving into fracture sprains and strains, different types of fractures. An avulsion fracture is when a portion of a bone becomes fragmented at the site of a tendon attachment due to traumatic stress. A closed fracture is when the skin over a fracture site remains intact. A communion fracture is when bone fragments when it fractures. A compound fracture occurs when there is a break in a bone that protrudes through the skin. A green stick fracture is when a break occurs on one side of the bone 
that does not damage the periosteum on the other side of the bone. This is commonly seen in pediatrics. A non-union fracture is when a break fails to unite and heal after 9 to 12 months. A stretch fracture is a break in bone due to repeated forces at a particular spot on the bone. And a spiral fracture is an S-shaped break in a bone due to a combination of torsion and twisting on the bone. Different types of strains. So a sprain and a strain are different. A sprain is an acute injury involving the ligament only. A grade 1 sprain is with mild pain and swelling, little to no tear of the ligament. Grade 2 sprains, moderate pain and swelling, minimal joint instability, minimal to moderate ligament tearing with some range of motion impairment. Grade 3 sprain, severe pain and swelling, severe joint instability, total ligamentous tear probable with severe range of motion impairment. Strains are an acute injury of the musculotendinous unit, so the muscle and tendon attachment to bone. Grade 1 strains, localized pain, minimal swelling, tender. Grade 2 strains, localized pain, moderate swelling, tender, impaired motor function and muscle performance. Grade 3, palpable muscle defect, severe pain, poor or no motor function and muscle performance. And then finally, a few more minor pathologies. Bursitis, acute or chronic inflammation of the bursa. This can lead to active range of motion limitations, secondary to pain and swelling. Contusions occur when there's mild to severe damage caused to the superficial and or deep structures caused by a sudden traumatic blow. Treatment includes active range of motion, rice, and compression. Edema is increased volume of fluid in the soft tissue outside a joint capsule compared to effusion, which is increased volume of fluid inside a joint capsule. Genuvalgum or knock need is when knees touch with feet separated. This leads to increased compression of the lateral tibial condyle and increased stress of the medial knee structures. So you'll see this very often in your TKA elective patients before they've had their surgery. Genuvarum, bow-legged, knees bow with the feet together. This increases the compression of the medial tibial condyle and increases the stress on the lateral structures of the knee. Kyphosis, excessive posterior curvature of the spine, usually within the thoracic spine. Lordosis, excessive anterior curvature of the spine, usually within the cervical or lumbar spines. Tendinitis refers to acute or chronic inflammation of a tendon with a gradual onset, tenderness, swelling, and pain. And then finally, Q angle is the measurement from mid patella proximally to the ASIS and to the tibial tubercle distally. Normal Q angle is 13 degrees for men and 18 degrees for women. And the theory with measuring this Q angle is that excessive Q angles lead to abnormal patellar tracking and possible knee pathologies. So that's it for musculoskeletal pathologies. The next episode, 2.16, we'll talk about musculoskeletal pharmacology. As always, the outline will be in the show notes. Thanks for joining me.